Hi guys, in this video I'm going to be unboxing, testing and then taking apart the Seagate Expansion Desktop 6TB hard drive. Seagate produces this drive in a range of sizes from 4TB all the way up to 16TB. But with the growth in shear farming, capacities of 8TB and over are very hard to find right now. And when you can find them, the prices are often extortionate. So that leaves the 6TB version as by far the best cost per terabyte drive right now. I picked up three 6TB drives for €109 Euros each for a total of 18TB, while a single 12TB drive is almost €370 Euros at the time of making this video. Inside the box you get a small user's manual with some simple diagrams to help you with the setup. It also includes a single free data recovery attempt in case the drive fails. The drive itself has a very simple clean design in all black with a diamond relief pattern on the sides and an embossed Seagate logo towards the bottom edge. On the bottom are rubber feet and some vents to aid with cooling. There's an access indicator light on the top and at the back you'll find the USB 3 micro B socket and a power connector. Also included in the box is a USB 3.0 Type A to Micro B cable, a 12 volt power supply and enough plug adapters for the power supply to cover the entire planet. Setting the drive up is as simple as plugging in the power and then connecting a USB cable between your computer and the drive. When plugging it into my Mac I found that it's been pre-formatted as NTFS, so if you want to use it with a Mac you'll have to reformat it as either APFS or HFS+. Installed on the drive from the factory is a PDF warranty guide and a couple of icons which bring you to the registration page on the Seagate website. Moving on to performance now, freshly formatted in Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, this drive scored around 183 megabytes per second for write and 186 megabytes per second for read, which is on a par with other 3.5 inch external drives in this price range. Since these drives have a tendency to slow down as they fill up, I did a second test with the drive 50% full, and this time the write speed only hit 131 megabytes per second and the read speed 122. So you can expect a significant degradation in performance as the drive fills up. For some real world tests, first I tried copying a 1 gigabyte folder containing just under 10,000 small files from my internal SSD. This took 24.2 seconds, which is a speed of 45 megabytes per second. Then I tried copying a 30 gigabyte folder with 22 large files and this took 3 minutes and 1 second, which is 164 megabytes per second. Now I'll show you how to crack this drive open and harvest the SATA drive inside for use in a desktop PC. Before starting there are a couple of things to be aware of. First, Seagate say that this will invalidate your warranty. And second, breaking at least some of the clips on the case when opening the drive is unavoidable. With that said, to open the case you'll need a thin metal prying tool. I found the iFixit Jimmy to be perfect for this, but if you don't have one, a table knife will work too. Starting in one corner, insert the end of a tool into the thin gap between the top of the drive and the lower case, and pry the outer shell outwards to release the clips. You'll hear a click as the clips are undone. Be careful when you're releasing the clips on the back of the drive not to damage the ports. Work your way around each edge rotating the prying tool about 45 degrees to push the lower case away from the top. Once you've done all four edges you should be able to lift off the top of the drive. It's inevitable that you'll end up breaking some of the clips as these drives just weren't meant to be taken apart. But there should be enough clips still intact that you could put it back into the enclosure if you needed to. Now that you have access to the interior, peel up the adhesive foil towards the rear of the drive and remove it from the case. Now you can rotate the drive up from the back and lift it out. The SATA to USB PCB is held in place with a single screw, which you can remove with a Phillips screwdriver. With the screw removed the PCB can be slid back off the SATA connector. On the sides of the drive are four rubber pieces which can be simply lifted off to expose the screws underneath. These four screws can also be removed with a Phillips screwdriver.
With the screws removed, you're left with a bare 3.5 inch SATA drive ready to be installed in a desktop PC. In my case, the drive was a 5400 RPM Seagate Barracuda Compute SD6000 DM003. At the time of making this video, the bare drive retails at €239, Euros, while the exact same drive inside an enclosure retails at €123. Euros. So that's only around half the price. I hope this helps if you've been looking for a cheap 3.5 inch drive for your desktop. That's it for this video, thanks for watching.